for you. Here we go. Let's break this down. The Voynich Manuscript, okay? Now, again, I can show you a little bit of the writing from my own perspective, but it's all good. I'm just going to show you what's going to be in my head and what I would technically take down in terms of my notes in mm -hmm. regards to what would be on here. Because now remember, when you do the integrated, you know this, you're going to get three minutes. Mm -hmm. Now, some people would say, hey, should I take notes? And I'm like, uh, yeah, you yeah. should take notes. Okay, because I have students who don't take notes. And mm -hmm. then what ends up happening, they go to the, Listen. they go to the, you know, the listening, they take notes, and then all they do is copy everything word for word. Just to put this into perspective, Yakalin, mm -hmm. you got, I don't know if you know him, but it's called Noteful. This guy, his yes. name is Joseph. He looks a little Arabic. I have no idea who gives a damn, right? But this guy literally- <laughs> Yeah, no, who is just talking about? Right, right. It, it, and if you look at this guy, this guy literally tells his students to copy the first sentence and to copy the last sentence and to copy the last sentence. We're talking the first sentence in the introduction and copy the last sentence in the subsequent paragraphs. And all of his students get 21 mm -hmm. to 20 or what was it? 20 to 21. And I'm like, no fucking way. You should be telling them to do that. You got to take notes in terms of all of that. If you just mm -hmm. add in about three words, you're going to fucking get hit horribly. You are not going to do well at all. Now, it's shocking because I have a couple of students over the past uh, week or so uh, that similar to what my other students have gotten, like a 27, a 26, a 26 and stuff like that. This is why I told you this past week, everyone ended up getting a 20 and a 21 in their writing. If you actually see the writing and they get fives on the ETS website in the academic and they get 4.5 and they get about 4.8 in the My Speaking Score software. So if they get a 9.45 out of 10, that is similar to a 28. But when they took the test, they got just a 20. This is why I'm telling you that there was a big scam in the ETS. Indians infiltrated. I have no fucking idea. But we know the CEO, customer service, everyone who works for ETS and the proctors are all top to bottom Indian. Great big scam. Mm. This is what happens when sorry ass American companies outsource their jobs to places where people get paid 10 cents an hour and they're going to favor high scores over them instead of everybody else in the motherfucking world. Mm -hmm. I say this all the time. I'm even surprised that a girl from India follow my Instagram recently. I was like, oh my God, you're Indian. I was like, you know, I'd be talking, I'd be putting y'all on blast all the time. And the reason why- So I, is so I have to change my last name for <laughs> Mohammed. Hey, we better yeah, get you Mohammed. an Indian name. We're going to call you, we're going to call you uh, 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 Deja Punjabi, okay? And when you speak- Patel. Like, yeah. <laughs> Ah, that's the only way, Yakale. But no, you live in Florida. The Indians, I don't hear so many bad scores coming out of Florida, okay? And okay. Northeast America, excluding West Virginia and Virginia, it's good. New York, Boston, Rhode Island, those areas, good testing. West Coast is fucking totally fuck, fuck, fucked. Them Indians, I don't know how they run these different ETS centers. I don't know how they do it, but this is how the scams always happen. For, for five, for the majority of all these students to take the test on the same day and all get the same score in terms of 20, yeah. in writing, 20 in writing, 20 in writing, 20 in writing, yet they were getting 28 on the practice test. So just trying to tell you, hey, this is what we're up against. And I haven't heard this since this is the first time I heard this with the new test. So anyways, who cares? Fuck them. Let's go. All right. So here we go. Introduction. You got a template. It's always going to be this. Now, remember, I'm going to highlight this very quickly because the template is in your head. Mm -hmm. What you take notes on is never going to be any of the template. See, the template is both the reading and the lecture are about, mm, which is, that's your template number one for sentence number one. I'm going to tell you exactly what that means. And then the author of the reading states that that's your template in your head. You're never going to write that down on your paper. And then after mm -hmm. that, 
However, the lecturer refutes the arguments made in the article. Mm -hmm. That's all your template in your head. That's would be for the introduction, right? That's for the introduction. And so what you're going to actually take notes on, I'm going to color code this, let's say purple. Purple sounds sexy. And I'm going to italicize it too. Now, what we have to do here, both the reading and the lecture are about, hmm. Now, let me just highlight this area right here. And let me highlight this area right here, just so you know exactly what is going on. Boom. Now. Both the reading and the lecture are about mm, which is mm. okay. And so what we need to do here is we need to figure out exactly what it is we're trying to build up and build into. Okay. We need a title and we need a description. Over here it says in 1922, a bookseller named Wilfred Voynich acquired a beautifully illustrated blah, 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 a manuscript. So this is the title. Ah, that's the title. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to say, but okay, both the reading and the lecture are about the Voynich manuscript, comma, mm -hmm. which is, and now you're just going to put your own words into it now. If you say Arsenio, and I have to point this out, Yakelin, so many students say, oh, Arsenio, you know, uh, well, I thought that was a cat. Boy, I'm telling you, well, I don't know what goes mm -hmm. on. I live in Thailand. It's just nuts out there. I don't know what happens. Okay, <laughs> what you need to do, what, when we look at this, a lot of my students say, oh, I can't find any cinnamon, synonyms. I said synonyms is one of the four ways to paraphrase. My favorite way to paraphrase and how all my students get 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23 is by word order. You could pluck out as many words as you want. Just don't pluck out an entire sentence and write down the motherfucker. Remember, mm -hmm. going back to that student I had back in August, September of last year, she was like, oh, I've been crying all day. I got a two out of five in my integrator. I said, can I see it? She did exactly what motherfucking Noteful was talking about. And she learned this style from someone who has taken the test five times. Yakalin never listened to someone who has taken the test five times. Because these people, it shows their inability and their lack of adaptability in certain situations and their, again, inability to get perspective and hold themselves accountable and say, I keep getting 20, 20, 20. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Maybe you need to seek out someone to figure out what you could do better instead of doing the same thing over and over. Don't do what Einstein talked about. <laughs> Insanity, right? Doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. We know that, right? Don't. Mm -hmm. So what we got to do, we just got to mix stuff up. So my thing is the Voynich manuscript is a handwritten book made of a specific material in the 15th and 16th centuries. Now, you're probably wondering, like, hey, Marcetti, seems like you're doing a lot of different things over here. Well, you, you just summarized quite a few things. That's right, because this is what I'm going to put into my description. Mm -hmm. What else did I write down? Uh, uh, material made of, there it is, vellum material. Now, watch this out. Which is, or which was, a uh, fucking, I'm just going to say is, which is a hand written book that was uh which is a hand which is a handwritten book that was uh that was I don't want to say was made because passive voice and then next thing you know the Indians and ETS are gonna start complaining about oh my god that you know you can't have passive voice you're so stupid okay which was Oh, man. Okay, which is a handwritten book. Here we go. From the 15th and 16th centuries. Done. Mm -hmm. That's my description. It was a handwritten book from the 15th and 16th centuries. I'm trying to stay away from the passive voice because for some reason, ETS hates it. Mm -hmm. ETS voice. absolutely okay. hates it. So I'm just like, okay, well, if you hate the pass the passive voice, well, fuck it. I'm just going to try to make this as basic as possible. That's tip number one, Jacqueline. You ain't got to use all these different tenses. 
The biggest thing that you have to do is write over 300 words and you got to say, however, moreover, furthermore, also, they, the Indian, for some odd ass reason, by putting all these linkers in your writing, apparently that's what ETS loves. But if you do that in the real world, if you have to submit anything at your residency program and you say, moreover, furthermore, they're going to say, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Stop using so many motherfucking linkers. What's wrong with you? you? see what I mean? Fake academics versus real academics, okay? Fake ass ETS Indians versus the real, okay? So, anyway. <clears throat> boy, I'm on fire. I'm just beating these Indians up. Okay, let's do it. Here we go. Let's do another one. The author of the reading states that that's your template, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to look right over here. And I'm going to, let's make it this color and let's put an underline. This is the area that you're going to include in your second sentence of your introduction, because it's basically about critics not believing blah, 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 but we don't know what they're not believing. So let's look at the sentence. No one has been able to decode the script and understand the content. Hey, several mm -hmm. theories have been proposed to explain the origin of the Voynich script. So what am I gonna say here? The author of the reading states that no one has been able to understand the script. Yes, I was gonna say decode, but I decided mm -hmm. not. I just said understand, it's easy for me. Mm -hmm. Understand the script, but, but several theories have been presented in terms of where it could have come from. Ta-ta! Mm -hmm. You see how I did that? That second sentence, you're basically talking about, okay, what's the problem? No one understands the script. And then mm -hmm. sev critics or some scientists or several people or several theories, something several. Several theories have been presented in terms of where this script could have come from. Ta-da! Mm-hmm. How well? usually, yeah, usually it's about like uh, four to five um, lines, right? That's right. About four to five lines. That's right. So, mm -hmm. however, the lecturer, here we go, refutes the arguments made in the article. That's it. That is your introduction. Whew. Does that make sense? So if I yeah. were to take actual notes... If I were to show you my actual notes, it would probably look like this with my hand, right? If I was actually writing this on my iPad and I did this with my hand, it would be about, it would be like this. Okay, here we go. Voynich manuscript. And then after that, 15th, 16th century. And then I would write down, no understand. <laughs> maybe come from that's it that's all i'm gonna write with my hand because i don't have much time remember mm -hmm. you only get three minutes but don't worry once the listening comes the reading disappears and when the listening's finished it comes back so whatever you do miss don't worry you could come back and you'll be able to get it okay mm -hmm. don't worry about that you will be able to come back and get it later on okay but that's exactly what i would write down all right. So I just wanted to show you that because a lot of people, they don't know exactly what to write down and stuff. OK. Mm -hmm. And then if you have those notes yep. and you memorize the template, you can, you know, develop what you're going to actually say. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. That is exactly right. So when that happens, the next thing you know, you're going to be what is it? You're going to be good to go in general. So. uh, Oh, my God. Yeah. Just need to hurry up and bam, gotcha. So when you have that script in your head, which is this, all you got to do is write down this to create this. Oh, you see what I mean? Having the mm -hmm. structure, all you have to do is write down this to create something like this. Mm -hmm. That's it. This is structure. It's not so much a template, template, template. Um, I still don't under. I still don't know exactly how good or bad templates are in terms of speaking. 
because Ana Carolina sounds like a 26, but she got a 20. And sometimes she overextends on her to on her um what is it? Ana Carolina is uh is the dentist. Oh right? uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ana Carolina. Yeah, she's, she's the, the one I recommend. You know what I mean? You. Yeah. She yeah. is fucking a 100. But again, her first test, people get 82 to 84. The listening was fucking bonanza. Okay. I'm gonna be explaining that in another time. Okay. Uh mm -hmm. the reading, uh uh overanalyzing. Like I said, anything that can go wrong on your first test will go wrong. So this is why with her, I'm like, lower your expectations, but I know what she's capable of. But she got yeah. a speaking 20. Do you know how bad do you have to be to get a speaking 20? That's not her score. But next thing you know, she ended up getting it. And I'm like, God damn, I know what a 20 is. A 20 is just like rapid pause and pause, 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 pause. She's not like that. So that's why I told no, you. No, she's good. The fix was in. Yeah, her, she is on the back. If she took it at the other testing center that Ariana took it at, I don't know where Ariana lives. I forgot. Or Carla. I need to hurry up and figure out where Carla lives because she got a fucking 25 in her speaking test and 27 the first time she ever took the test. If wow. I took it at that test and said she would have gotten an amazing score. So anyways, I'm just trying to tell you all the circumstances that revolves around scores and stuff. So here we mm -hmm. go. Now you're probably wondering, what do you take notes in in regards to the reading itself, the reading paragraphs. Well, check this out. Mm -hmm. Paragraph numero uno. One theory is that the manuscript is a genuine work of some scientific or magical subject composed in a complex secret code. Okay. All I'm going to say, some kind scientific uh, secret code. That's all I'm going to write. Next sentence. Anthony Oshkong. Okay, let me write down. Anthony Oshkam, just in case. Fizz and botanist, identified as a possible author. Poss, author. Now, I'm trying to make it seem like this is very similar to what I would take notes in with my hand, right? You mean mm -hmm. take notes by hand. And so, going into the next one. Since many plant illustrations in the Voynich manuscript are quite similar to those in his book from 1550. Because... Plant illustrations, same as his. Ta-da! That's it. That's all I'm going to write. That's all I'm going to write for those reading notes. Now, let me go into the next one. Then you're going to see me recreate everything. But first, I'm going to take this bold off. I hate the bold. It's ugly. And plus, I'm going to get my sexy font. Oh, yeah. Super sexy. Okay, here we go. Bam and bam. All right, let's do it. So let's go back to it. You see, so I'm going to show you exactly how I'm going to be able to formulate everything. So, Jacqueline, what's going to happen is you have the ability to formulate some fantastic sentences, and I believe in you, okay? Because I've seen your writing. I'm like, oh, yeah, Jacqueline, oh, yeah, 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 Jacqueline, she's going to be all right. She's going to be good. She's going to be real good, <laughs> okay? And so you're going to have to use your language to make it sexy, as well mm -hmm. as the linkers that the Indians love, okay? But nonetheless, let's go back into... The basics. According to the to some theories, the manuscript is really a fake. Okay. A fake, no real meaning. That's all I wrote. For example, it has been proposed the manuscript was created by Edward Kelly. Create Edward Kelly. Stole money from nobles in Europe. Now, the sentence says that a 16th century personality who extracted money from nobles across Europe by pretending to have magical powers. Okay. After that, it says, Kelly may have created the manuscript as a fake magical book. Mm -hmm. Magical book, sell to wealthy. He used a made-up alphabet in a completely random order. Okay. It looks like a book of magical secrets, but there's nothing. Alphabet, random order. That's all I'm going to write. Those are my notes. Mm -hmm. All right. And this last one, another theory, or the last theory, is that the manuscript mm -hmm. is actually a modern fake. Modern fake created by Voynich. As an antique book dealer, Voynich certainly had the knowledge of what old manuscripts look like. Had knowledge, old manuscripts. Okay, and created a fake one, possibly created fake one. 
Perhaps Voynich's plan was to sell the fake as a mysterious old book if he received an attractive offer. Sell fake as book to get offer. Now remember, you could say whatever the fuck you want to say. Because the, the what the AI tech is not grading you based on what you say. It's grading you based off the very basic fundamental writing, let's say kindergarten, first grade, second grade bullshit. Misplaced comma, run on sentence, period, this, that. We learned all of that back in fucking grade school, right? I'm talking about way elementary school. That's what you're actually being graded on. The AI tech is not smart enough yet in terms of grading what you're talking about. I could talk about motherfucking ice cream. I can make shit up about Voynich. I could say the craziest shit, I'll still get a high score because that, hey, because it's it's bullshit ass ETS, okay? And so that's exactly what we are trying to do here, okay? Mm -hmm. So don't worry so much. Like, like, and the reason why I tell you that is because say it, sell fake as book to get offered. Was that true? No. Do I give a fuck? No. Does ETS give a fuck? No. I'll still get a high score unless the Indian snub me, Okay. So now it's the putting together part of it. Here you go. This is going to be template galore. Here we go. Now, the author of the reading. Oh, no, 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 no. Stop. Firstly, the author of the reading states that that's your template. It could have been some kind of scientific secret uh, scientific book with a secret code. See what I did? You see all that connecting language? Now mm -hmm. I'm going to bring in what the Indians love. Also, okay, they love that. Okay, so you got to put that in there. Also, Anthony Oshkam who was a physicist, I don't even know if I could spell it, and botanist was, uh, not, I didn't say botanism, I said botanist. Come on now. Botanist could have been the author of the book because the plant illustrations from the manuscript resembles his work. Done! there it is that's what what you're gonna do you're gonna write two and a half lines of reading or three lines of reading okay two and a half lines or three lines of reading okay all right now the thing is a lot of people and again noteful he just says write one line one and a half lines you're gonna get a low score Mm -hmm. you're going to get a low score. All right. You got to write two and a half lines, three lines of reading. The more words, the merrier. Whoever writes 350, that's where the high scores come. If you write mm -hmm. 250 words, you're good. You're not going to get a over 24 with 250 words. Okay. I remember three, four years ago, about four years ago, they would say, all you need to do is write 175 words. Fuck you. You're trying to get me to take the test again to feed you fucking scammers. Uh-uh. Right, as many mm -hmm. words as possible. And this is what an Indian, kind of funny, I know, three years ago when they had known me because I was very popular in Facebook groups, she told me, hey, the more words you write, the higher the score. She got a 29 in her reading. Mm -hmm. And all she did was buy a writing course that I had on my website from three years ago. So the more you write, the better with the integrated, not the academic. Academic, always just one to 100 to 125, okay? Okay. All right. So there it is. There it goes. Numero uno. Now there is numero dos. Mm -hmm. A fake so, note. Yeah, go ahead. I have, a, I have a question. When, you know, when you are in the test, on the practice test, uh -huh. um, you will have to, you have to have the, uh, the notes from the passage and then the notes from the listening, right? And then after that, you combine like that, right? Like That's you're right. doing. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And again, make sure you write the reading notes first, just as you see here. Noteful and other people are telling people to write the listening notes first. 
some other Venezuelan tutors. They're saying write the notes first. I'm like, mm-hmm. guys, if you write the if you write the listening notes first, smack yourself in the face. <laughs> yeah, hey, I don't would do feel comfortable like that. Like right, the right, you... right. The yeah. reading always comes first. Okay, there was a girl two years ago. She's like, well, four of the teachers I had before told me to write the listening first. I was like, okay, write a listening first and get a bad score then, another 20. She did what I did. She got a 25. Still wasn't happy because she was a very discontent person. But hey, I told her it worked. <laughs> Let's do it. Here we go. Secondly, the author. Oh, let me make it red for you. Let me make it a little bit red for you. Okay. Secondly. The author of the reading claims, you see, states and claims, I said slaves, okay, claims, you see, it's different from what I said in the first paragraph. I said states, switch it mm-hmm. up, switch it up now. Switch it up, yeah. Do I think it's going to, if you switch it up, do I think you'll get a higher score? Yes. If you don't, do I think you can get a lower score? Not a lower score, but you'll just get a standard score. You know, the Indians love giving 2021. This is when they scan. Mm. So don't give them the ability. Don't give them that power. Okay, Mm. so here we go. Back to everything else here. Secondly, the author of the reading claims that that this is just a fake with no real meaning. Okay, now what I'm going to say, for example, ooh, this is good. I'm mixing it up now. Instead of saying photo the board, I'm going to say for example, comma. See, see, smart. Mm-hmm. For example, this could have been created by a personality named Edward Kelly who created thing, who, 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 let, check this out, stole money from nobles in Europe. As a result, he created this magical book to extort money by having a random alphabet in no real order. I don't know. I just mixed everything up, but who cares? But you understand the point. Me, I'm just, I'm, I, have a, I have a mind of a lot of things and I just recreate a lot of stuff, okay? Uh, you following me? Yeah, Kalen, not too yeah. bad, right? No, good. Si se puede? Si se puede. <laughs> Never give up. <laughs> <laughs> Yo creo en ti. Yo creo en ti. Okay. All right. Gracias. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, the author's final argument is that it might have been created by Voynich himself. For instance, because Voynich had a lot of knowledge of older manuscripts, it is possible that he could have created a fake one. Thus, he sold this manuscript to get an offer. Ah, the author's final argument. There it is. There it is. There go my templates. There goes everything. I put for instance over here again, make it look sexy, mix it up. And then thus is my favorite. Okay. So these mm-hmm. are the different linkers that you're going to have to use. Okay. Here are your links. Okay. This down. Moreover, furthermore, also, however, nevertheless, on the other hand, therefore, thus, these are the different types of linkers that you're going to be using, okay? Okay. And there it is. Those are the reading notes. That's exactly what I did. Mm -hmm. (sighs) Not too bad, huh? Mm -hmm. All right, now it's going to be the hard part. Let me hurry up to see if I'm actually sharing the sound. Yep, I'm sharing the sound. Okay, so here goes the part where I got to take some of these notes. And then you're going to see the end product. All right. Now let's see what we got here. In 1912, a bookseller named Wilfred Voynich. All right, let's see what we got here. 
do 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 I'm gonna do this real quick. I punieta. I'm gonna do this right quick. I'm gonna put the listening notes here. I'm gonna do this real quick and put them listening notes over there. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, of course, I'm gonna put the listening notes right down here. Bam. Okay. So here we go. Watch me work my magic with my listening notes. All right. So here we go. Tres, dos, uno. Now listen to part of a lecture on the topic you just read about. None of the three people mentioned in the reading was probably the author of the Voynich Manuscript. According to the first theory, whoever wrote the Voynich Manuscript thought they were conveying information so important, or so powerful, that they used a special code to keep it secret. That doesn't fit what we know about Anthony Ascom. Ascom was just an ordinary physician and scientist whose books didn't contain any original ideas. For instance, the little herbal mentioned in the reading was a description of common plants based on other well-known sources. So, given what we know about Ascom, his books, and the kind of knowledge he had, it seems unlikely he was the author of such an elaborately coded secret document. Second, although Edward Kelly was notoriously good at tricking people, it seems unlikely that he created the Voynich manuscript as a fake magical book to sell to some rich people. You see, the creator of the Voynich Manuscript took a lot of care to make the text look like a real code. But people in the 16th century were quite easy to fool, so it was not necessary to make something this complex. If Kelly wanted to create a fake for money, there's no reason he would have put so much work into creating a manuscript like this when a much simpler book would have suited his purpose just as well. Yeah. Third. We've been able to date the manuscript materials using modern methods. Both the vellum pages and the ink on the pages. Both the vellum and the ink are at least 400 years old. That rules out Voynich as the author. If Voynich wanted to create a fake, maybe he could use vellum pages taken from some old manuscripts. But where would he get 400-year-old ink? So, it seems the manuscript was created centuries before Voynich obtained it. Summarize the points made in the lecture. Yes, yes, Being yes, sure yes, to yes, there it is. Okay, I know now. The thing is, like I said, I wrote a lot. Absolutely, I did. But I just wanted to give you an idea. Now, remember, I'm only writing the important words when it actually comes to me writing by hand. Right? So mm -hmm. I'm just going, okay, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's just like really straightforward clockwork, right? Yeah. But when it actually comes to creating everything, it's a little bit different. All right. So here we go. Let's check this out. Here, your favorite part. Gotta have your template, right? Let's do it. <laughs> However, the lecturer refutes this idea by stating that according uh ooh, according to the first theory it was conveyed in uh conveyed in inf uh, conveyed in a code to keep it a secret Okay, now let me just do this. Let me put it black because it's just all red here. Bam! Okay, now check this out. Also, oh, no, 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 I'm gonna say furthermore. All right, Oscom was just an ordinary physician with no original ideas. So he would be an unlikely author now. You're probably saying, oh, you didn't mention the little herbal because I didn't mention it in the reading. So it's all good. It doesn't really matter. Now, it could have been great if I mentioned it. But again, it's already at 91 words. So it's OK. Mm -hmm. All right. Because the thing is, if I mentioned it, I would have to make another sentence and say, for example, OK, the little herbal, which was blah, 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 blah. It was just a book that had common plants. Yeah. Normally, okay, I probably would if I wrote it down, but I'm just trying to give you an idea that you don't got to put all of it in there, okay? Okay. Okay, so here we go. 
Here goes another one. On the other hand, the lecturer argues that, what's this guy's name? Ah, uh, that, here we go, let's do it. That although Edward was notoriously good, it is unlikely because the cre the real creator took care of it and made it look like a real code. Hmm. Okay, and now I'm going to slot in that last little bit. In addition, that's red. People in the 16th century were easily fooled. And so it would not require much work to fool them. <laughs> that's all I'm going to write. Okay, that's easier said than done. Okay, that's all I'm going to put. Bam. Not too bad, right? What do you think, Yakalan? Mm, good. Okay. Yeah, you're putting together the, you know, the. Uh, yeah, I formed the ideas in a better way. See, 110 words, it made up. So I'm at 100, 100, 150 plus. That's 350 minimum. I'm cool. And you mm -hmm. see, sometimes, you know, when I write those, look, 16th century, easy to fool. If one to create, not too much work, create. What? What the fuck does this mean? So what I did, I just looked at the notes and I recreated something in my head instead. Mm -hmm. Easy. Okay, now here goes the last one. I'm going to put nevertheless. Nevertheless, the author posits that, see, it's almost the same exact thing, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. just, I mean, the same, the, art, the lecturer argues, the, art, uh, the author contends, the author posits, the author refutes. These are all the different... Hell, if you don't know anymore, just say refute synonyms, okay? <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. disproves. Ooh, that's sexy. Rebutes. Ooh, <laughs> Confucius. No, I'm kidding. Confute. All right. Uh, no, I think, ooh, discredit. Although that's not that's not a good word, actually. Uh, refute doesn't mean discredits the author. He's not discrediting the author. But remember, oh, this is ETS. They don't fucking know. The AI tech doesn't know. It's going to look and say, that's a, that's just a very, very good one. Okay, so don't worry about that. If you want to write discredits, do it. All right? Oh, I'm so terrible. I know, Yakali. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Let's do this. The, nevertheless, the author posits that these items, oh, no, I don't want to, I don't want to make a passive voice, that Dating was used to figure out how old the manuscript was. You see how I just mixed everything up? It's because I didn't want to use passive voice. Because I know on the my speaking score, it's going to start crying. like I'm not my, yeah, the my speaking score. You're going to see me grade myself. They're going to start crying like a bitch. So mm -hmm. figure out how old the manuscript was. And it turned out out to be 400 years old. In conclusion, ooh, this rules out Voynich as an author because although he had vellum, it would be impossible to get 400 year, year old ink. Done. Mm -hmm. That is the conclusion. And welcome to the integrated. I think we should probably try to uh 